Hi, my name is Liam Davis and welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here already, then you don't know that we invest in property and we help others do exactly the same. And if you are looking for financial security and long-term wealth, that's what this channel is there to provide. So this is our latest acquisition. This is the before the project. So you're gonna see right at the very inception of when we're buying the property all the way through to the end, the numbers, the plans for the renovation, everything in between. So nothing's gonna get held back. And if you wanna know how that's done, then watch the rest of this video. First thing that hits you, when you walk in the property is the smell. It smells awful. It's like a pungent, damp, moldy smell. It's not great. It's green on the walls. There's all that kind of stuff around. It's not great. But those are the properties that we like. And the reason we like those is that the ones that we can add value to. In most cases, it's gonna scare off your average buyer. And that's why we like those properties. So we're looking for something we can add value to, but has real potential. So many people say it's the worst house on the best street. So we know that the end values are really good on this street and that's why we've bought in this area. And we've seen a steal there. Uh, we actually had a good relationship with the agent. It's a property that already been bought and they were the first people to contact us back and then we were able to save the chain break and be able to purchase the property. And that's why we were able to jump in so quickly is we we're buying fast with cash and then we were able to then complete the chain and everybody walked off happily. But that's the kind of properties that we're buying, people in some sort of situation where they need to sell quickly and that's what we were there to do. And the reason they need to sell quickly is one, they couldn't afford the money to do the rest of the property up. It was turning off a lot of people because there was a lot of mold issues, but one thing that is really good is having a good team around you who know about the building and the potential downfalls and upsides, things that people may think cost more than they do, that you can get around. And you're gonna be able to see that when we move over to the kitchen in just a second. But first of all, let's have a look at this room. So the room is open plan already. I know, I know, I know. I say it every single time. The open planning is probably one of the best things that we're doing at the moment because it's what people want. Open plan living, that space to move around, have the family around. It's one thing, where, especially with the pandemic and everything like that, being locked in your house, you just want more space, right? So we're able to do that because we've got an open plan living space where you can have everybody around, some of those illegal lockdown parties, all that kind of stuff. No, you don't want to be doing that. So if you want to go and see the rest of this property i'm going to show you some b-roll we're going to show you really quickly uh, what it really looks like but the scope is, is is big it's a big room and i'm really looking forward to what this will look like in the end so the plan is to do laminate throughout this uh living area and we're going to do a whitewash you know pretty simple because we obviously put in tenants in so the whole goal of this is to rent the property out we're going to whitewash the rest of it let them allow them to put their own stamp on it as long as they don't put wallpaper on you can see another video to just see how, how much I hate that. Right, so we're not gonna put any wallpaper in. It's just gonna be whitewash, simple, gray, white, all the accents and everything like that. It's gonna look really nice. It's gonna look modern. And that's the feeling that we're going for. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. Please give us a like. It helps more than you'll ever know. We've got more renovation videos coming up, so keep watching. Let's move on to the kitchen. Here we are in the kitchen, and this is one of the things that really sold me on the property. This is a massive kitchen. It's an L shape, so you can't quite see it, but I'm gonna show you some B-roll of this. The, over there, it wraps around the corner. This is a nice long kitchen. You're gonna get lots of units in here. It's a really, really nice family space overall. You might be thinking though, why is the ceiling black? And I'll tell you why now. So when we came into the property, we seen that the, this was all black and thinking, okay, this could be something that could cost a lot of money. And that was our biggest worry. But we were happy to find out that this wasn't really the case. So what had happened is that there was no insulation in the ceiling. So just let me, let me just see how this goes, right? So we started smashing through and, but we started smashing through uh, the property and found out there's no insulation in the ceiling. So now, as you can see, there's like trusses that come along here. So in the tr in between the trusses, there was no mold. So those are the things that were kind of like insulated already. And in between that, that's where the mold was coming in. So we already could see then that the reason for that was because of the insulation. Now insulation, although it is typically it's gonna cost some money, it's not as bad as any kind of other issue that could have been there, but it was really putting off the conventional buyer. You know, your first time house buyers, all those kind of people, they weren't really going it for it. And I don't really know the reason why they didn't have the knowledge of the, about the property. And this is one thing that I was saying, having the team around you, people who know what they're on about and learning all about this stuff, 
we was able to ask our project manager, we was able to ask, even the agent that had a building background, and he suggested that it could be that. So we already had some sort of idea going into it that this was going to be something that we could rectify ourselves, which is the main thing. If you wanted to do it, we could rectify it, and it was relatively cheap to rectify. Not the big massive issue that a lot of people would have thought it was originally. So the overall plan for this room is that we want to go for a white marble effect tile going right the way throughout the room, and we want to also go for a kitchen top, which is going to be oak with a navy uh, cabinet. So that's going to really stand out. We're going for a high-end look. Overall, that high-end look is so that we can have that extra end value. So we're going to try and push the ceiling price of every other property with on this street so that we can then come up with a high-end valuation to refinance, which is our goal in the end. We're going to buy, refurbish, and refinance this property, get most of our money, if not all of our money out, which is our plan. Being as this is a L-shaped kitchen as well, I know that we could really use the space and we're looking for creative ways to add to the kitchen. So we're going to go through with the designers and really look at how we can make this space give that wow effect. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. Oh, sorry. I always get carried away when I get in the shower. So this is obviously the bathroom, and what we're gonna do is continue the marble effect tile right the way throughout here. And we're gonna add a nice feature wall. So that's gonna be a feature tile. We're gonna tile floor to ceiling. This is the thing that's gonna sell that wow factor of the property. It's gonna impress the surveyor, because the surveyor is gonna be looking at, again, is the kitchen and the bathroom. And this, the bathroom, is gonna really look really nice. And we're gonna also take away this manky looking ceiling. And it's covered in mold. It's from back like from the 80s or something and then it's not a good luck. We're gonna take all this out. This is gonna be completely transformed. Now I tell you, those stairs take your breath away. I wanna tell you a bit more about the layout of the property so you get a bit of an understanding. So we've got a three bedroom, semi-detached property with a large extension on the back, which is a single story extension, which has got a flat roof as well. So that overall is a decent size of a footprint for this property and that's why I really like it. You get a lot of property for your money, which is obviously what you want in every transaction that you do, right? So here we have the main bedroom and the main bedroom is nice. It's a double bedroom and it's got a good size space. You've got wardrobe room right there. You've got a TV even in the, in the bedroom. They left us a TV, thankfully. Um, but it's a three bedroom, like I said. So the other room, uh, it's, got, it's got not too much to do in here. I mean, you've got some spots of mold, but it's been empty for quite a while. And it's kind of something that's gonna be expected. So my plan is probably leave what we can. Don't have to do over the amount. If we're gonna try and keep costs low, don't try and do absolutely everything. Just try and keep it to the minimum what you can do to really add the value. If it's not gonna add that much value, don't bother doing it. It's just a hint and there's a word of advice. If you're gonna renovate a property, try and keep your costs low, keep your budget low, only focus on the things that are really gonna matter. Overall, the things that the surveyors are gonna look at, like I said before. So one of the things that you can see in the other bedroom is that there's a issue in the top of the corner of the ceiling and that's similar to what we've seen downstairs. So where the trusses are, you can see there's mold in between each of the slats. And that's kind of probably an insulation problem again. So we're gonna have to go in and inspect it because they don't want the problem coming back, especially when you've got tenants. Then we have another room then, which is the room that is kind of the, not the smaller of the two, but I'd say it's the second biggest then, say. That room is quite decent, it's a decent size overall. I'm really liking the size of the, the property and the bedrooms, it's given a lot of space, so I, I would say. Are you currently got any projects on at the moment? Let me know what kind of stuff you're working on. Let us know in the comments. The plan throughout the top floor is to rinse and repeat. So what we're gonna do is gray carpet throughout, white walls, solve many of the issues that are already there that I've talked about and just make sure that we're giving a really fresh stamp for anybody who's come into the property. They're gonna keep it really simple and not really do too much. Just go for that modern looking theme, make it brighter as well. Really to just brighten the house up overall. Now it's time to show you the wet, rainy and windy weather of Wales. We've even got a surprise out there for you, so keep watching. Right, here we go. First thing you'll notice is the garden is covered in vines at the moment, but it's a decent size overall. What we're also gonna do is probably take away some of this um, kind of extra, obviously, the vines and all of that kind of stuff. We've got stones already, but we need to make this uniform. At the moment, it's a mix mash of lots of different things going on. 
what we're going to do is make it uniform, make it so that we've got stones or slabs, not 100% certain on what we're going to do. It's all going to depend on quotes and how much we get for the landscapers. First thing is first though, that fence has got to be redone and I know that that's going to be definite. So we've got to redo the fence, make this look pretty nice. Uh, one thing you can also see maybe in the distance, there's a damn trampoline on the roof. That's the thing that I've seen instantly obviously uh, and we bought the property when we originally bought the property well first view in that wasn't there so we came back and somebody thought they'd buy us a present for moving in and they bought us a trampoline and they thought they put it on top of the extension who would have knew right so the other thing you might see in the distance is there is a crack in the rendering over there so what we're gonna have to do is sort out the rendering on the outside of the property as that could cause further damage um, it needs a uh, freshen up overall so with this property what we want to do is give it that kind of newer look and fresh paint outside and we're gonna go for a kind of a light gray color probably um, just to make it look more modern than the yellow well, if you can call it yellow, that color that we've got on the property currently. So I'm gonna show you the rest of the figures next. So now we've come to the all important part, the breakdown, how we got the deal, the numbers, what we expect the property renovations to be, all of that juicy stuff right here. So how do we get the deal? The situation for this one is that the landlord had wanted to exit the market. They'd already had enough of this property. It was gathering mold, it was sat for a long time and they just wanted it shifted. They'd been messed around by people looking to buy the property before. The purchase price being 83,000 pounds. That's pretty good for a semi-detached property just outside Cardiff. It's a really good investment in our case and you're not really finding these kind of deals at the moment. So you might be thinking maybe something's wrong with it, but this has been on the market, gone off the market, came back on at the original price. The market had moved by that point as well and we ended up getting quids in because the market also helped our acquisition. So we were able to then readjust the price. The seller then realigned their expectations of what they'd got offered originally because they just needed it shifted at that point as well. The other thing we also did was negotiate the solicitor's fees. So we got our solicitor's fees down to about 850, but usually typically be about a grand. Um, so just be, bear that in mind. So you're gonna have your legal fees, you're gonna have your stamp duty, and you're gonna have your purchase price. That's gonna be your upfront cost, along with the next thing, which is a refurb. Now the refurb of this one was actually pretty cheap considering what we originally were thinking. Maybe we had to do a little bit more work because of the damage or the repairs that we've seen in, in the property, but that wasn't the case. What we were able to do was then get a quote for 16,000 pound for the refurb. Now, I always add on a contingency and I would wanna say probably at least 10% of that, but I'll, I'll always chuck up the budget up to 20,000, but I've worked my numbers on that 16 just because Typically, when you get that, you're always gonna go in and say, okay, it's gonna be about 16, but just bear in mind, if that does change, I know that that's only gonna be additional four grand, um, but they always put the contingencies in there. You don't really know what could happen. Another project, a roof fell off. You know, you, you don't really get that, and even a surveyor weren't picking those kind of things up, so just bear that in mind. The next figure is the rental. So the rental of the property, currently market values have gone up so much in terms of rental that it's up to 750 pound. So on an 83,000 pound purchase price, having the property rent out for 750 pounds is a great yield. So total project costs are coming in at 99,850. Now the hidden cost there is the holding costs. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. Um, you'll get a full breakdown of how much it really ended up costing us at the when we do the before and after video. So you get the whole breakdown. And I know that refurb projects don't always go 100% to plan, therefore the contingencies. So when we get the real figures then, we can tell you how much that's gonna be. But I've factored in six months possibly being vacant. Now that's overshooting it by 100%, but I wanna make sure that we've definitely got that in the bag and it's not going to catch us out. So our estimated end value is between 140 and 150 but I've worked it out on the 140 just because we know that properties in worse condition have sold for 135 so we're looking at a really strong comparable there of 135 being sold on the street. So yet again, this is an all money out deal. So our return on capital employed annualized is 198.95% return. So that's a quite a hefty return on our money and it allows us to get all of our money out and go again. But again, there's the contingency. If the refurb goes over a bit, then we're only leaving a couple of grand in the deal, uh, potentially if it goes to that 20,000 pound. But otherwise, we're gonna pull out 
2,759.50 and that's with those potential holding costs. So if we're working out on the other side of things where it's going to be probably a bit more than if we didn't have those holding cost numbers in there. But this is just what I've potentially worked out those holding costs to be. And as this is a BRR, that means we're getting all that money out. I love that. That's a true buy refurbish refinance. It's kind of those diamond in the rough deals. If you can find them, not typically out there at the moment, but if you do find them, make sure that you're putting your 100% effort in to get them over the line because they allow you to keep on rolling your cash over from project to project to project. So we worked out what our net cash flow would be from the property and this is if we refinance at 3% interest rate and that comes back at £457.50. and pence. That's pretty good when you think about it. So that £457.50, pence, that would be £5,490 annualised. So that's a good return on your money. Uh, not only that, you've got to think of the capital appreciation then, if we were factoring that in as well, if we get it in for 5% increase per year, uh, which typically if we're looking on average properties prices going up, we don't know how that's going to go with obviously the markets, but if we look at it over a long period of time, we can see that if we're going to be conservative, maybe 5% increase, roughly that would give us a 280% increase return on capital employed over five years. So we're looking at so obviously holding for the long term, keeping our property, just paying us with all the, the house's money, keeping our own money and then recycling it to go into another project. If you haven't already, go and check out a full video of a renovation that we just did. We got all our money out and then some. Check it out right here.